William Jennings Bryan. I don't know whether to feel more irritated or sorry for him. Today marks the birth of William Jennings Bryan, an Illinois man who moved to Nebraska, which is possibly one of the kinder things that I can say about him. He was a great orator, to be sure. They called him the great commoner, although I dare say that seems somewhat disrespectful to common people. Hm. He had somewhat of an interest in the common people, but he also had wild theories that were preposterous as those of Jefferson himself. Uh, he also seemed just as desirous as Thomas Jefferson to take whatever side he thought would be most popular at the time. He is the cheapest faker, I dare say, that we have ever had for nominations of presidency. But I thought that he was also a born demagogue who could put every fool and crank and preposterous putative criminal in the country behind him. His utterances were wildly silly, as they are criminal. For example, he had a rapturous zeal for the silver standard, to throw away the gold standard entirely, which, in my judgment, would have shaken this country's credit and damaged her reputation beyond repair. Truthfully, it would have cheapened our currency, and to expect that to have a cheaper currency and then suddenly be able to buy everything with something that is not worth anything, that is a perilous notion. And this was the sort of man that I had to campaign against in 1900, when I was asked to serve as McKinley's vice presidential nomination. But, uh, yes, well, I was not interested in serving as vice president. Uh, but I was warned that uh, if I did not put myself on the ticket with McKinley, that uh, certain voters in the West, if I was not an option to vote for, well, they would choose the likes of William Jennings Bryan. And no one wanted that. I dare say not even the Democrats. I dare say not even William Jennings Bryan. Hmm. Uh, but of course, uh, he campaigned to be the president three different times, and three different times he failed. But I will grant him he was persistent, and eventually it paid off in some extent, because after the election of 1912, when Woodrow Wilson shifted the kaleidoscope towards the Democrats, Wilson chose Bryan to be his Secretary of State. Well, and you are well aware of my opinions of Woodrow Wilson, so I dare say they were suited for each other.